In this video, I'm going to go through this 2020 paper called High Performance Code Generation in MIR that goes through the GEM example. GEM stands for General Matrix Multiplication and basically shows how using high level, a high level operator for representing the matrix multiplication and a set of transform passes with some parameters, you can get to near a optimal performance. And this gives you, of course, the advantage of viewability, maintainability, and portability over, uh, let's say, the Intel MKL uh, hand optimized uh, implementation or the Bliss implementation, which are basically harder to maintain, harder to, uh, I mean, and you cannot retarget, you have to do a manual implementation for each different targets, and this does some scale. So by having these high level, uh, uh, implementation, we, uh, it becomes more practical. Okay, so the paper is basically going through these optimizations. Again, uh, we're going to use the matrix multiplication. Uh, that's uh, the main use case. Uh, the MLIR futures used are uh, memrefs, affine dialect, and polyhedral utilities. Polyhedral are very good to find optimal schedule for nested for loops. Uh, Le leveraging, uh, I'm gonna, uh, the paper is going to leverage MLIR to have optimal modular and reusable code. And here we can see some of the numbers. Uh, this is the MLIR high level operator on its own. And you can see that it's very close from the hand optimized Open Blast and NKL. And all of them are very close to the absolute peak of the machine. Uh, and also, uh, it was argued that uh, if you use an internal kernel of Bliss, uh, you're going to have better performance and you cannot beat that. But the author also demonstrate that using an internal kernel inside the outer nested for outer loops of MLIR is not going to give significant advantage. So using pure MLIR rather than have an internal this kernel is not, it doesn't matter. So that's good to know because this implies hard, uh, more maintenance. And another thing to consider is that the author basically indicates manually the the optimizations, the optimization optimization passes, and also the parameters. So if you use a deep learning or some other search algorithm, you can find the optimal configuration for a particular target. Who knows that if this can go maybe above uh, this? Uh, this paper has a goal common also to domain specific languages like. A highlight, a tiramisu, a TVM in which you provide a high level representation in a declarative, in a declarative way rather than procedural, a functional way rather than procedural. And with this high level representation abstraction, you provide a schedule that is independent of the algorithm and basically provide a portable implementation, a maintainable implementation. And the goal is basically a separation of concerns is another principle, a software principle involved in here, that you want your algorithm expert, for example, somebody working in deep learning, computer vision, image processing, to, that knows his algorithms. That per person should not know, should not be an expert also in hardware. I mean, let the compiler do that. And that's the purpose of this. If you specify uh, with a high level abstraction the algorithm, then uh, let deep learning or some other uh, compiler technique to be able to fit the best schedule for your algorithm to, to optimize it. Here are some details of the hardware used for the experiments. Uh, it's an Intel machine, and here's the cache information. It has three levels of cache, and yeah, many of these problems of finding the best schedule, which involves styling, or rolling, vectorizing, and all these things, it boils down to finding how you break down the nested for loop in such a way that it fits and maximizes the use of this cache hierarchy. And this is very varied between hardware and hardware. And I, I don't think it's worth having a human being having to figure out how to match uh, your nested for loop to this. A machine is clear, uh, clearly a machine you should be able to do this. And that's what the uh, research has been focusing on. Yeah, same thing goes with AVX. The register sizes of AVX and the specifications vary. 
per machine. And that's part of the fitting problem that this thing is trying to solve. Uh, you can pause uh, for this to get more details on this, or you can go to the paper to to get more information. Uh, here's the, the software information. Again, you can pause or go to the paper for more information. I'm going to put the paper in the link in the description of this video. First, we're going to get the measurements of the performance in the naive matrix multiplication. Here's the algorithm that they used. And he tried it in Mac and also in Linux, Linux using GCC and in Mac using Clang and you can see the big difference in performance between Mac and Linux. He attributes this uh, bad performance of Mac uh, to, to bad choice of innermost vectorization for locality and that it could have been fixed by having a loop interchange. And usually this loop interchange uh, issue uh, happens due to the layout of the memory, for example, if the, you have a matrix that is a, and you're working row major if your innermost dimension is the row dimension then you're gonna have non-contiguous data which uh, both you're gonna get a lot of cache misses and also you can maybe not use the vector rise uh, the vectorized rays a uh, vectorized operation uh, so if you do a loop interchange then it's gonna be continuous and you should fit there Okay, so I tried this in my local machine and I get almost using the same command and get almost the same results. So it's consistent there. Then he goes to briefly shows that a using polyhedral source to source translator gets 25% of the machine peak with this. And as we saw in the graph uh, previously, MKL and Open Blast are nearly 92% of the peak of the machine, while this is also close in that, in there. So, yeah, so here are the numbers. The way that the author made the experiments was by writing MLIR code and then using this MLIR CPU runner that takes us and input the MLIR code and cheats it and executes it. Now we're going to do the naive general matrix multiplication in MLIR. You can see the implementation of the math matrix multiplication operation here. You, you take a couple of uh, variables, and this is the output. And you can see very simple in MATLAB, this is operation, the matrix multiplication. And we're going to load all the operators, or, I mean, all the uh, uh, parameters using membrefs. And then we just do the multiplication and store it in the temporary register and the register go to the output parameter. And here's the harness. Here, and this is the one line for the matrix multiplication. So yeah, the equivalent in here, here like, which also has similar goals to MLIR at this in this case. It will be something like this, looks very elegant. Yeah, the, both of, of them are one line, but I guess they have their pros and cons ish. MLIR stands for multiple level intermediate representation. I, I understand that that's the, what it represents. Probably you can put different names to it, I guess. It's meant to be, ex MLIR is meant to be extensible. And operate, uh, one of the advantages is that you can define dialects uh, that uh, define custom, oper uh, custom operations. And this uh, basically by using MLIR, you save a lot of work a common work that has to be done in intermediate representations. Uh, you can take advantage of that. And the author mentions that this lowering uh, between this multiple intermediate representation can have a, can be categorized as high, middle, low. In the high, uh, you have the tensor algorithm without for loops. Uh, for example, uh, in the middle, you have an affine dialect uh, defining the defining well the, the operations. And finally, you go to LLVM where eventually you have the executable. I understand that the highest level, there's no for loops. You just have the operation. So you have something like this. Okay, matrix multiplication. Uh, there are some attributes to it and the inputs and the outputs, but you don't define the, the implementation. There's no for loops. Then uh, when you lower to a middle level, then you have the nested for loop implementation like we saw in the last uh, in the last slide, in here, here you got the nested for loops. So 
first in the first level you might have some operation like this and then you have the actual lowering to that depending on the parameters because the parameters and the optimizations passes can get you a nested an optimized nested for loop which is the purpose of this paper and the automation basically that the other robots can encode powerful information for lowering and that's why we work in, in this paper okay so let's try this uh, naive implementation so basically we start from this high level operation and it's going to lower to this nested for loop so there's no optimizations in here so this is the command mlir cpu runner and basically you do the lowering uh, to linear algebra to loops to lower the fine go to LLVM, etc and the performance that you get for the naive implementation is horrible uh, 0.55 the other mentions that the OpenBlast and this approach use uh, the approach that they're using uh, can be expressed using a polyhedral schedule that we are seeing below. I understand that these OpenBlast blists are manually optimized and that they are explicitly indicating how the nested for loops are going to be. And papers like this one and others, and DSL papers, uh, are migrating from a empirical a program to a declarative program uh, and the difference is uh, you're going from specifying how to do things to what to do because you tell the compiler what I want to do and the compiler takes care of determining what is the best way of doing it and by doing that you have smaller programs uh, more maintainable programs more portable programs so that's why this tendency Polyhedral is a technique uh, uh, that to optimize nested for loops to find an optimal order of the computation because the nested for loop uh, determines the order in which uh, inner computations are done and that can be seen as a schedule. And basically poly in polyhedral you express uh, the, the iteration order as a polyhedral and use a linear optimization uh, techniques, integer linear programming uh, techniques to find the optimal uh, iteration uh, order. And that, that, that uh, when, when it can be applied, it can be very powerful because it goes to a, an exact, uh, try to go to an exact optimal solution uh, analytically, uh, rather than, for example, deep learning that is a little bit a random randomly going through the optimal solution so it is kind of powerful if it can be applied and uh, yeah polyhedral uh, i'm going to put some link about a uh, pluto auto scale uh, a polyhedral scheduler and also about isl integer cell library uh, which is used uh, to express a uh, polyhedral uh, uh, computations and one of the concepts is the schedule notation in here uh, we are trying to express a uh, tiling and you can see that these are the induction variables, ijk of the nested for loops, a three-dimensional one. And you can see that the outer, these are going to be the outer for loops, and you're dividing it by the chunks. And the innermost, you, we're going to iterate uh, repeatedly through these small chunks. And here you can see a breakdown of this polyhedral schedule uh, for the open blast and bliss. And you can see how the matrices are breaking down into chunks. And eventually, for example, uh, you can see here the inner inner loops that has a, the a modulus operator, which repeatedly go through the same many times through the uh, inner chunk, inner block. Uh, you can see this NR in here, and you can see the modulus operating in here. And the same goes for MR here. You can see the the iteration and the thing is that uh, you can see in the colors the purple it goes to level three cache green to level two and blue level one and red to the registers so uh, well you can break your head uh, trying to see how your nested for loops fits into these boxes but that's again that's a problem that the machine can automatically determine okay how i'm gonna break down with tiling 
uh, in such a way that I can maximize the usage of this level one, level two, level three, and eventually the innermost are exploding the registers. How can how can I do it? And that's something that is better for a machine to figure out. The other list a couple of ways of doing tiling in MIR. One of them using the tile transform or the loop interchange transform. But uh, the others are using the polyhedral uh, HOP uh, transform and they depend on the external library ISL. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put this link in the description. And the authors implement this pass as the HOP OPT pass, which you don't see at the beginning of the MLIR command line. And the authors express the tiling schedule as an MLIR affine map. They perform the cogeneration via ISL and then convert it back to MLIR. So basically, they're working with the, the schedule expressed in ISL. So by having this polyhedral schedule, they don't have to have the for loop in, uh, implemented. So you can have a matrix multiplication and have this ISL schedule. So there's the algorithm and schedule separation. So then you can take, once you go through the various polyhedral schedule transformations, then you can take the algorithm a matrix multiplication algorithm and the schedule and combine it and do the actual nested for loop. The actual implementation when you lower from the high uh, phase to the low phase uh, in MLIR. Okay, so here's uh, the original matrix multiplication and as mentioned before, you have the matrix multiplication algorithm which is expressed as a high level operation and then you have the schedule that goes from the induction variables because you have three dimensions you go to this breaking down in which you do some tiling and then you do some loop interchange you change the orders of the induction variables okay and also for simplicity is dropping down some of that schedule so now you take the operator and the schedule which is the, basically the recipe, the order of the computations, and you, with that, create the nested for loop. You do the lowering into the nested for loops, and you have this implementation, and you can see uh, that this 256 division goes in here. Uh, this one goes should go in here, and the rest in here, and then you have uh, the rest of the, the for loops. You can see this, uh, the rest of the iterations in here. Now let's give it a try, uh, and you can see still it's a matrix multiplication. It's just uh, the matrix multiplication algorithm is, is the same. You're basically fetching the A and B, and the C. The what you change with the schedule is the, uh, the order. The, this is what you're playing with with polyhedral schedule. Now let's try it uh, with a command, and this is the polyhedral uh, pass in MLIR, and the lower and the rest of the lowering. So with only this optimization, we get a now it's three times faster, but still far away from NKL, OpenBlast, or and this. Okay. In high performance computing, there's a very powerful technique called a packing. Basically, copies and packs access data into contiguous buffers, small contiguous buffers. It indexes it, those buffers and uses them for the computation. It, this is basically a, a helps with reuse, avoid a cache a misses, conflicts, TLB misses, and improve a hardware perf a prefetching performance. In combination with tiling and other optimizations, it, it, this can help remedy some of the problems seen in sparse arrays. These MLIR libraries can help with this. A fine data copy generator and a fine data copy generate pass. And for the case of in the left hand side matrix, it, it, it can be the packing can be done in the second loop to exploit the level two cache, as you can see the green here. For the B matrix, the right hand side, uh, it, it is basically copied on the uh, is packed uh, copied on the third on the third loop to exploit level one cafe. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, level one cache. And this is done automatic. This is basically captured in this MLIR pass called uh, OPT copy, HOPT copy. Now we can see the effects of this copying or packing. So, first we have the polyhedral pass. We have now the copying, uh, packing, 
pass in here and then the rest of the pass as we had before. So the improvement is improved to 2.38 gigaflops. Uh, it's a 50% improvement in performance, which is very bad compared because we want to get to the 60, 70 gigaflops. And basically this transform uh, on their own uh, are not very good, but when combined with others can be very powerful. For example, with tiling, and we can see the effects of copying here. Uh, and basically we're packing the, I understand that this should be the A dimension. Yeah, is uh, as mentioned before, is packed under under the second dimension in here. The B is packed under the third for loop, under the third dimension, and then we pack it in one two. And once we pack it into continuous contiguous small memory, then we can use it down here somewhere. It should be yeah. You have the two in here, and the one should be around here. So basically, you get more efficient code because you have reduced a, yeah, the benefits that I mentioned before. The roll and jump transform can also be used in combination of the tiling and packing to exploit register use. For for example, uh, OpenBlast and Bliss, uh, uh, the author mentioned that they reuse the output matrix only in register because it's convenient to use. I mean, this is the principle, memory principle in which the things that you access uh, more frequently should be in the in the faster, fastest, more accessible uh, memory. And in this case, the the memory that you use most in the matrix multiplication is the accumulator, and that one you want in the register, which is the the fastest, but uh, and more accessible to the processor, but also the the less. Uh, uh, well, it's small in amount. Uh, level one is has more uh, amount of memory. Level two even more, but each of them should be slower. Okay, so you want uh, that operation within the register, and on roll and jump, it uh, takes care of that. It's gonna roll the the for loop so that they can the operation can easily be placed in registers. So this is the factor that you specify, and there's a uh, MLIR pass for that. It's called uh, on roll. Uh, in addition, uh, you can use Scala replacement. And Scala replacement, I don't, uh, what I understand it does is it uh, take some array access that can be uh, that is uh, basically can be turned into a scalar. If it can be proved that you can turn into a scalar, then you can save a lot of memory and data copy, and you can have much more efficient code. Okay, let's make a quick experiment in here. The author makes a quick experiment in here. So it's using unrolling in both of them. It's using tiling here, both of them, and scalar replacement in both of them. So the experiment is basically trying with and without a packaging. And yeah, a, yeah, in here it's using a, I think by doing this, uh, you get rid of the unrolling, probably. But uh, and you can see the difference of the packing with and without that is basically got twice the speed. And this is basically the advantage. I mean, this only this this shows the power of having a high level abstraction that uh, you can specify the the scale transformation in a very high level way and parameterize. Is that you can make experiments like that. Imagine yourself uh, doing this uh, with an nested for loop manually. It will might take um, half an hour or something like that, but this just takes seconds, and that that's what makes uh, this approach so appealing. The author points out that when you get to the low level code, I, uh, you are gonna see the XMM registers rather than the YMM, which has more bits and could leverage better. CMD. The author of the paper points out various times that vectorization uh, might not be leveraged as it could if there are not accompanying optimizations that pave the way for its usage. And one of the things that vectorization needs is locality. I understand that it needs data to be contiguous. And this high level information that we have for the operation can help with this. Again, for experimentation, we're going to try vectorization on its own. 
and there's gonna be this HOPT VEC MLIR pass for vectorization. You can see in the lowering that you get this special type of membranes uh, casting and this plot operation. And for that, we get just uh, small uh, gigaflops for only vectorization. So vectorization on its own is basically just, just basically needs some accompanying optimizations as we're going to see in here. Now, gradually, we're going to apply additional optimizations. Uh, with tiling, it jumps uh, significantly from 1 to 7. Now, uh, vectorization, tiling, and packing. Uh, we can see the the typing should be here, vectorization, the packing. Only with this you get to 11 gigaflops, and now uh, you add on rolling jam, uh, and also on rolling with scalar placement, all the transform that we have seen so far, and now we get to 49 gigaflops. We're getting closer to the 70. Yeah, we're 23 percent away from Blitz and from NKL. We're getting closer. Now let's see how with all these transforms in which we get 49 gigaflops, how they look. This is how clean the, the original algorithm looks. You only have the matrix multiplication operator without an implementation, just the parameters of, for the tiling. Uh, this is, these parameters are going to affect a, 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 the vectorization, these ones. And the author disabled uh, the enrolling by setting this parameter to 1 to make it more readable. And with just this picture, uh, it clearly shows the advantage of having this approach. We can experiment faster and basically trying to optimize this manually doesn't scale. It's not practical. Uh, still have a slight advantage uh, doing things manually as we're going to see in the end, but for most of the cases it might not be practical. And you can see in here that uh, you can see the packing here as shown before that you store the A, the B. Uh, we break down uh, the outer loops uh, to have inner iteration, and then those inner iterations are unrolled. And you can see the rolling here eight, and you can see a vector size of four. And uh, yeah, this should basically go to the vectorized operations. And also by changing a vector a array expressions into scalars, a LVM is going to take advantage of that and turn them into registers. That is scalar replacement. The author takes a brief detour to talk about layouts and how the MLIR membrane can be used to express layouts. So it can be seen as a simple flux template with three parameters, and one of them is the dimension sizes and the base type. So this is a matrix 64 by 256 and has a base type of floating point 64 bits. Then uh, you have the schedule parameter, and finally you have the memory address. In this case, you put zero, but probably in most cases, it's going to be a non zero hexadecimal number in here. So yeah, so you have two dimensions, and the two dimensions are represented by these two symbols. And then you go from this symbol to the transformation that is going to express the layout. In this case, uh, you have something like a tiling in which you do a floor division, and then you do the modulus. And you have it basically is a tile, and you can see it in here as well. Again, as mentioned before, uh, one of the advantages of this approach is that we can play with the parameters that to get more better hardware usage, in, in, like better utilization of the le uh, level 1, level 2, level 3 caches and registers. And these are two of those parameters. You can see, uh, yeah, Blisa, uh, the rolling seems to be fixed, but in here, of course, it's dynamic. And we're going to play with some of them. These are two of the combinations that are going to be tried. So for the combination of MR3 and NR16, uh, if you do the math, uh, the vector registers are going to fit uh, into the hardware architecture exactly. Uh, this is not the case for Blizz. 
and yeah, uh, this is again the command. Uh, Halai Teramesu uh, has something similar. The computer at store and, and tiling. The tiling has a uh, parameters like this, and you can play with the parameters similar to what you are doing here. Uh, Halai uses deep learning one at least one of the autoscalers and Teramesu uses polyhedral. So it's kind of similar that you have the optimization in this case is tiling and each of these. Uh, Scale and primitives have their own parameter as well. So the, the game is almost is very similar. And you can see that with these parameters for tiling that fit the particular hardware architecture, uh, we get the 61.9 uh, gigaflops, which is the highest that the author gets in this paper. Okay, so now let's, uh, the other varies the, the MR and NR parameters. Uh, with 4 and 8, uh, there's 49 gigaflops. And 6 and 8 uh, goes uh, to 40 gigaflops uh, for bliss. And basically, we choose 3 and 16, we get 61.8, which is basically the same as what was shown before. And this basically shows the disadvantage of having a a manually optimized nested for loop that is fixed and you manually optimize it for a particular target but then you go and use it in another machine that has different a uh, cache hierarchy and sim uh, bits or something like that and then your manually optimized nested for loop is not going to be as optimal as it could and then uh, maybe for for the machine that you optimize this please library it's going to work better than any uh, MLIR or, or Halide or TS, DSL technique is going to work better for that particular machine. But when you go to another target, then the, these portable techniques are going to definitely uh, perform better than the hand manually optimized uh, library. And we can see in the assembly that the innermost loops are using registers as they should and they are continuous as they should and they're taking advantage of the YMM registers we have 256 bits, bits that is convenient for the AVX SIMD instructions you can see here the SIMD instructions with the broadcast and the move and the proper computations in between And now we're going to do reverse experimentation and basically we can see here a uh, packing packing is basically a uh, should be the same as the storat in halide because it, uh, it's basically the same you basically store a continuous memory inside a particular dimension it should be the same and first uh, we uh, see the uh, without a uh, without packing we can see the huge drop in performance uh, without a uh, on roll and jam but with packing uh, our packing is up uh, here uh, so we get a uh, even bigger drop and without both of both of them we get a even a uh, higher drop so basically the interaction between all of this optimization is uh, crucial like uh, again uh, the selection of optimization passes for the schedule and the parameters the, that combination is a uh, what gets you into the near optimal performance and again uh, like in uh, DSLs this is a search problem and the author is doing it manually and I think that if this is done automatically in MLIR then you can get even better performance and now in this graph we can see graphically the progressive increase of a, the, the throughput of the matrix multiplication algorithm as we add a transformation for example we started with the naive vectorization 
with cash tiling, then with cash and packing, cash and register tiling, and eventually all optimizations will take us maybe nine nine percent away from the hand optimized, but still there's some distance from the absolute peak. And here is comparing the the optimized purely MLIR optimized one with the other ones with Blizz uh, is nine percent away from the Open Blast and Intel's MKL. Here's yet another uh, experiment in which scalar replacement is disabled here, but uh, enabling on Roland Jam. But uh, might, this might be an error from the author because I don't see the Roland Jam. Uh, let me see if you go back in here on Roland Jam has this pass in here supposed to be set to true uh, like in here on roll but when you go here you don't see the unroll uh, and it says that it enabled that might be an error of his part uh, but still uh, well, the point that he's trying to show is that uh, you cannot rely on LVM to do scalar replacement and he basically complains that uh, MLIR is supposed to perform well on these optimizations is uh, it's related to multidimensional subscripts and that's a speciality of MLIR. And yet another experiment in here is uh, without the packaging and rolling and you can get, yeah, it's almost the same. So you can, yeah, you can see, get the point. One of the important topics within the paper is uh, this complaint about High performance computation researchers that say that the performance of a handwritten inner kernel cannot be attained through compiler generated code. And basically, that each last ounce of performance should be extracted in the inner, uh, in, in the inner kernel. And so, the author is going to make an experiment in which an inner bliss kernel is going to be used within the outer for loops of a generated by, generated by MLIR. Uh, also, he mentioned that the points that the HPC researchers are making are debatable, and he's basically going to show uh, the counterexample using the gem, the matrix multiplication use case, which is a very important uh, use case. So it's going to prove them wrong, uh, because uh, if if what they're saying is true, it's going to be painful because it's going in the opposite direction that we want to make. So a uh, research like this is trying to prove that you can have portable high level algorithms that are separate from schedule that can be optimized automatically. Well, I, he's not using automatic optimization, but he's facilitating that optimization. So by ha a, if the HPC researchers are right, it means that we have to get our hands dirty optimizing this microkernel. And that's something very undesirable to domain experts that are uh, experts in deep learning, again, uh, experts in a computer vision and uh, they don't want to get their hands dirty into the hardware. That's something you don't want to, uh, it's very hard to get some, somebody that is expert in both of them at the same time. I'm not going not gonna to go in details on this slide. Uh, you can pause it uh, for, uh, for better understanding, but the, the point is that uh, this is what is going to be used to use the Blizz microkernel within MLIR. And we're going to use the same sizes as please to be able to leverage that microkernel. OK, uh, so here we have the tiling uh, and the packing, but we're going to disable rolling and vectorization so that we can swap uh, this inner kernel for the bliss kernel. So here you can see that it was taken away. And now this is the bliss kernel. This pass was added for this, and you can see that the tensors needs to match the dimension sizes with the rest of the algorithm. Again, here's the replacement. Okay, now the the Blizz kernel within MLIR is tried, and you can see in here we have to ha use the size that matches the Blizz kernel. We put the Blizz a uh, pass in here and have this 61.4 gigaflops. And he also tried some more experiments without the bleeds uh, and also with a different kernel size. And you can see you can see that by having to have this uh, MR, NR match bleeds, we are losing performance because if you put other number, you get a 50 
uh, gigaflops. But then uh, we tried, this is the what was found with uh, MLIR, pure MLIR with the uh, optimizations, the best combinations. So at least for this example, he showed that there was a better performance that that using that using Bliss. But I, I wonder what would happen if this is tried in another machine in which the six and eight parameters are the optimal combinations. Im imagine that the optimal combination is six and eight in here. What would happen if you use Bliss? There's a chance that uh, the Bliss can give you a higher performance. But again, it's still, uh, the author found this of a sequence optimizations manually and the parameters manually so uh, still the uh, the portable way can it might be possible to either beat the bliss or be very close to it uh, again uh, basically with this experiment we saw that uh, the pure MLIR is better than the one with the inner bliss uh, inside of it this is compared to the rest and but still the the point that you can use an inner kernel with M MLIR is proven in cases it's needed but I, again a MLIR allows for cheap high level experimentation and which is not only important for portability reliability and maintainability but it is also important for a rapid prototyping a, without having to worry about performance Okay, and now another experiment with SJAM, basically change the, the, the base type of the matrix multiplication operation. And again, a, to match to another a, algorithm, a, basically you just have to modify the NR and the MC to match the particular problem and get optimal performance. Well, in this case, uh, it was able to beat the open blast. You can see it in here, and it's very close from MKL, 2% only away from it. And in this case, the inner kernel of Bliss beat uh, the pure MLIR, but just by by, by small amount, and it also beat uh, the Bliss uh, operation. Uh, still, uh, every, all of them are far away, and not, uh, not to the absolute peak, but yeah. The other questions, the other questions, why uh, the remaining nine percent? Uh, well, he mentions that Bliss is also using prefetching, and that's not being used in MLIR, and that's something that could be improved. Uh, and with that, maybe it can beat all of the algorithms mentioned before. But also uh, notice that the manually uh, optimized algorithms can learn from what MLIR is generating and even for them proven, proven them. So I, I think I think in theory, I mean, if you have uh, an auto scheduler, DSL auto scheduler or MRIR a lowering optimization, the manual implementation can always beat it because it can learn from the output of the algorithm and further improve it. But still, uh, it doesn't matter if the manual implementation is gonna beat the automatically generated. The, the important thing here is that it's close enough because just by being close enough, you win because you don't have to manually do the work of optimizing that. You take away that responsibility and you save a lot of money and time uh, by doing so. Here are some of the open questions of the author. And one of them, I think, was how do we determine good and optimal parameter values? And I would suggest using some deep learning or search method to, to find them. The conclusions and takeaways that I found in this paper is that near optimal and portable readable code uh, for GEM uh, was generated from high level operators in MLIR, which is very convenient. It was achieved using members affine dialects for digital utilities and MLIR optimization passes. Uh, it was shown at least for the DGEM and SGEM examples that having an inner this kernel was not necessary for optimal code, although if it is needed, it can be done. And high-level tuning is uh, cheap and powerful and very fast. Uh, you can get to the optimal code either manually or you can uh, do it automatically as well, which is what the DSLs are doing. Thank you very much.